Manchester, a city known for its music and comedy. It just gets better and better for Watford and more and more calamitous for Manchester United. But lately, it's becoming a hotbed for tall buildings, with them springing up round the city quicker than a douchey coffee shop. A uh, large black coffee. A what? Large black coffee. Do you mean a venti? But before recently, there has been one that has towered over the skyline of Manchester for over a decade and goes by the name of the Beef and Tower. And we're going to tell you about how it came about. Before the start of the 21st century, tall buildings in Manchester weren't much of a thing, with the city's tallest building being the City Tower, which was built way back in 1965, standing at 123 metres. But with the turn of the century, land prices in city centres were going up, and with that, real estate developers would look to skyscrapers to get more bang for their buck. These skyscrapers would be mixed use, bringing both commercially, normally hotels, and residential together. This practice was pioneered by the bad orange man, Donald Trump. Didn't expect that reaction, but that's okay. And would allow for more slender towers, as residences required much smaller areas and offices, meaning less land and dollar would be required. And with that, Manchester was to get its own very own Trump-esque tower, but it would be a far cry from the red bricks that the city was renowned for. The city would call upon the turtleneck squad of Ian Simpson and Rachel Hoare to design them a tower. The pair would come up with a rectangular tower to maximise space, with a height to width ratio of 10 to 1, meaning it'd be one of the thinnest towers in the world. The tower would have 47 floors, but on the 23rd, the building would cantilever out 4 metres to indicate the change from commercial to residential. To support this cantilever, concrete columns ran from the sheer walls at floor 22, gradually stepping out in the floors above to reduce the cantilever down to just 2 metres, with the building topping out at 169 metres into the sky. To hold up the entire tower, two concrete cores would run up the building, which would transfer loads down into the ground via raft foundations, which would double up as a two-storey underground car park. For the skyscraper nerds out there, you might wonder why the foundations were not piles, which are typically used for tall buildings. The reason for this was Manchester's ground is like its people, well hard mate, consisting of sandstone meaning it could support the high loads with shallow foundations. The tower, just like every other building architects seem to design these days, would be plastered in glass, allowing both visitors and residents superb views of Manchester, including great sites such as the Heineken Brewery and Salford Shopping Centre. Construction on the tower began in April 2004, with the tower topping out two years later, becoming the tallest building in the UK outside London of course. Once the building was opened in late 2006 and the Hilton had set up its hotel on the bottom half of the tower, there was a real buzz about the place, quite literally. The tower has been known for producing a howling noise during windy weather. Which can be heard over 300 metres away and has been likened to a United fan's expression when Fred's on the pitch. I got, why are you playing Fred? The culprit for this noise is the roof's glass blade, which had been altered as the number of floors had been reduced from 50 to 47 due to the likelihood of the building swaying too much in the wind. Since its opening over 15 years ago, the Beef and Tower has dominated the skyline of Manchester it was even awarded the best tall building in the world in 2007 by the Council for Tall Buildings. Oh, really? <laughs> really? Yeah. And in 2017, saw its penthouse apartment being sold for £3.5 million, pounds, or 125th of a Paul Pogba. Love it or hate it, the Beefham Tower certainly stands as a symbol of a turning point in Manchester's identity one of red bricks and Boddington's to glass buildings and cloud water. Whether that's a good thing, I'll let you be the judge.